Hey there everyone, how we all doing? Today I wanted to bring you some gameplay and a generalized overview of Monarch, how well she plays, how to play her, how to be effective with her. This isn't a tried and true proper Monarch guide. I absolutely do not understand the Titan well enough to be doing a proper guide on it yet, but literally billions of people in my comment section so far in the past like couple of hours have been asking me to do something about Monarch, so um, this is what I'm going to come up with. So, let's go over what all of her abilities are, what I, what my opinions are on all of them, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get into the game a little bit later. So maybe there'll be a Skipperino, Cripperino in the chat who can just skip this and, you know, put a timestamp for the actual gameplay part. But here is the general idea for Monarch. So, she has the same amount of health as Tone and Ion, so 10,000 health. She has the same movement speed as them, same sprint speed. She has one dash by default, two with uh, the turbo engine kit. She has the same general Titan kits as everyone else. I am personally running over core because, frankly, this Titan is all about getting her core over and over and over and chaining it. So you absolutely want to be getting that as often as possible. Overcore helps you do that. Um, for the Monarch specific kit, you have four options. I'm sure that we're going to see a fifth option for her at some point. Um, I just don't know when and what that might be, but I bet that we might see another one to fill up a fifth slot, just like the other Titans have. Now, what we have first, Shield Amplifier. Siphon Shield's energy gain is increased by 25%. Now, that actually isn't very much. Um, I don't know the exact actual number of what amount of shields you get from this shield stealing ability. Which I guess I should explain before I get too far into the kits, huh? So let's back up a second and look at the overall abilities. So you have just your primary gun, the XO-16 chain gun. You know it and love it from Titanfall 1. It's a little bit less accurate this time around. It's got a much smaller magazine this time around, but that is supposed to be a balancing factor for the way that Titanfall 2 plays. And I can't say that I blame Respawn for making the changes that they did make. Now... Your main abilities are Energy Siphon, of course. So your Q ability, this is your defensive ability, is not actually necessarily a defensive ability. What it does is it uses the exact same animation as the laser shot. You shoot an enemy Titan with it, and you deal a small amount of damage, and you gain a small amount of shields. So this also provides an arc effect on whatever you shoot, whether it's a pilot, minion, reaper, titan, whatever, they will receive an arc effect just like they were hit by an arc grenade. So their movement speed is slowed, their turning speed is slowed, their screen becomes blurry, all that good stuff. So you can essentially just snipe people and arc cannon them as if you're playing Titanfall 1. This is this is akin to the arc cannon from Titanfall 1 in an ability, but it just loses the chaining effect and it loses the, well, damage for the most part. Now, the chaining effect kind of sort of can come back with a kit, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Or rather, a core upgrade, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. You have Rocket Salvo, just like Rocket Salvo from Titanfall 1. It's an unguided swarm of rockets. By default, the fire is five rockets, and if you upgrade it with your upgrade core, then it can shoot ten rockets. And for the third level of your upgrade core, you can make it actually tracking rockets. So you can turn it into the multi-target missile system from Titanfall 1. So that is a really, really nice throwback. Your core ability is upgrade core. This will recharge your Titan shields whenever you use it, and it'll cause you to upgrade your Titan. So you have level 1, level 2, and level 3 upgrades. We will talk about those later on. First, we'll go back into those Monarch kits like I was going to try and talk about before. So first up, we have Shield Amplifier. This will increase the shield gain of your, your uh, Shield Siphon ability by 25%. Now, that ability doesn't do very much damage whatsoever. It doesn't give you much shield whatsoever. So increasing that by 25% is kind of useless. It's like, let's call it 250 shields and 250 health, because that's roughly what it looks like. 250 shields plus 25%, so plus 10%, let's say, that's plus 25, 20% is plus 50, so you're looking at, as opposed to 250, 300, plus some change from the 5%, right? Not a whole lot. Th that isn't worth picking. That's like 75 health extra at max. More like 62.5 probably, but that's, that's not worth picking. Now, if this was increase shield siphon gain by 100%, I would suggest picking it. If it was 80%, I would consider picking it. 25%? No. 50%? No. 
75%? No. 100%? Maybe. So that's kind of how I feel about it. It's just, it's, it's, this, this number is way too low to ever be chosen. So I don't recommend you pick this. Energy Thief. This is my personal preference. Core meter is earned 10% faster, and Titan Executions will steal a battery. This just seems like a no-brainer. It gives you a mechanical advantage over other Titans that no other Titan has, and it allows you to stay alive as your Monarch better. It allows you to get your cores more quickly, which also allow you to stay alive better. The whole point of playing this Titan is trying to survive as long as you possibly can. Energy Thief lets you do that. The other kit that lets you kind of do that is called Survival of the Fittest. This one will allow you to have batteries repair your Monarch out of the Doom State. Now that is very, very nice if you're working with a team to try and get your Monarch buffed up to level 3. They can keep you alive pretty much indefinitely and keep you on life support. Alternatively, what you can do is run the battery boost, but not use it when you first get into the Titan. You wait until you get doomed, and then you can bring yourself back up out of the Doom State. But... Quite frankly, I don't feel that that is valuable enough to do, necessarily. I don't think that it's better than just waiting until your Titan takes some hole damage and then dashing off behind a corner and getting out and doing the battery real quick and getting back in with Phase and Bark. Like, I don't see this as being super great. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Rapid Rearm. This will reduce the cooldown of Rearm by 5 seconds, which is the other ability I think I just completely glossed over because I'm terrible at videos, but... What Rearm does is it refreshes the cooldown of your dash, offensive, and defensive ability. So basically you put everything on cooldown, and then you press your Rearm button and everything comes right back. Now it does not reload your, your assault rifle, but that's not a big deal. Everything else coming back is pretty, pretty nice. So Rapid Rearm lets you do that more often. Seems fine, right? If you're trying to play an aggressive build and there are one or two really aggressive builds that stand out to me that could potentially be really really good if your aim is really good um then rapid rearm may be the way to go for a build like that but we'll talk about that a little bit later next let's move on into core upgrades so the first one you have arc rounds so just reading it off to you guys xo 16 rounds deal more damage to shields and they drain energy from vortex and thermal shields also increases your ammo capacity this increase is from 35 rounds per mag to 45 rounds per mag this is my personal preference at the moment but i'm really torn between all three of these i think that they're all good options i don't think that you're wrong for picking any of them at this stage of the game when we're at day zero and i literally don't know what i'm talking about so Arc round seems fine. The extra capacity is the big draw to this kit for me. But I played a lot with missile racks on stream uh, right before I'm doing this video. And I have to say I quite like it. However, I'm having difficulty aiming it effectively. So it's a good ability. I just haven't really had a lot of chances to actually whip it out quite yet. For the second core upgrade, we have... Rearm and reload. Well, I guess now before I do that, I should probably actually talk about what everything does. So missile rack doubles your missiles that you have. Energy transfer makes it so when you shoot a teammate with your uh, laser your laser shot thingy, that will heal them. That will give them shields back. Well, it doesn't heal them, but it just gives them shields. The same amount that you would get from shooting an enemy titan. So it's nice to spread some health around. You can play a supportive monarch, kind of, sort of. I mean, your, your goal isn't to play support. Your goal is still to do damage and do titan things, but... As an added benefit, if there's not an enemy titan to shoot with your enemy tran your energy transfer, you may as well just shoot a teammate instead. So, eh, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a bad pick. Okay, core upgrade 2. Rearm and reload, faster reload and rearm speeds. This isn't your cooldown. This literally is the animation time. So, your rearm normally takes like a good second or so, maybe a little longer. With this kit, it goes a lot faster. Same thing for your normal gun reload. If you use the rearm reload kit, your XO16 reload speed becomes faster. Pretty nice. Next up we have Maelstrom. Your electric smoke becomes intensified, dealing extra damage to titans and pilots. It doesn't seem like a ridiculously high amount of extra damage, but it is appreciable, if nothing else. Um, I'm trying to make it work. I'm not totally sold on it quite yet, but it seems okay. 
Uh, energy field is the third one, and this is probably your bread and butter pick for a lot of people. This will allow energy siphon to affect a large area around the point of impact. Now, this does not mean that you can hit multiple titans and steal shields from multiple titans or give shields to multiple friendly titans. You can only still affect one titan with the primary effect of that, um, that energy siphon ability. However, the arc effect will bounce to other titans. It doesn't bounce, but it might as well bounce, right? Like, it gives you an AoE where every titan will be affected by the arc effect. So, this is kind of making your, your energy siphon ability even more similar to the arc cannon than it previously was. Um, I do think this is a very solid ability. It's really nice for very aggressive builds, and um, I think is worth your time to try and pick up and use. Finally, we have Core Upgrade 3, and these are the really, really crazy ones. First up, we have Multi-Target Missiles. This will allow you to hold your Rocket Salvo to lock on heavily armored targets, so that would be Titans and Reapers. Missiles deal even more damage. These things, I can totally vouch for the fact that these things really do hit harder than they did before. They are, they hit like trucks. They're very very powerful. A lot of damage coming out from these things. However, you cannot fire them like you could in Titanfall 1 where you just go, um, you know, mash the button over and over and just go one at a time. At least I don't think you can. I've never tried it, so maybe I shouldn't say it quite like that. But my assumption is that when you shoot these, your shoulder flap has to fly up and then you start locking and you shoot them and then it has to flip back down before you can press the button again to reactivate it. So it kind of flips up, shoots one, flips down, flips up, shoots one, flips down, which is terrible. You can't do that. So you must go for a big lock-on and shoot all of your missiles at once at your opponent. That can be very bad in certain situations. So this kit does have limitations. You can't quite use it as effectively as you could in the first game. Next, we have Superior Chassis. This upgrades Monarch's maximum health and removes weak points. That's key. It's really, really cool. You just don't have any critical hit points anymore. So not only do you have extra health, your effective health becomes even higher because you cannot be critical hit. Um, your chassis actually goes into a state where you have one bar of health more than a legion could have. So if you somehow find a way to heal your titan up to full by the time you get to core level 3, you have 15,000 health. 15,000 health. It's really, really good. And even if you never get to that level, it's not a big deal because when you hit that core upgrade 3, you get that 5,000 health extra that you are getting on top of your normal health bar right away. So if you have one hit, one hit point, you press your core ability at core upgrade 3, you now have 5,000 and one hit points. So you don't have to like, it doesn't just increase your max and then you have to heal up to it. You get those health points right away. Really cool. Finally, we have the XO16 Accelerator. This will make your fire rate at first a little bit lower than the chain gun normally, but it will increase your maximum fire rate and damage a little bit more. So it's it's fine. Um, I don't personally like this kit. I feel that the magazine capacity, even with that first kit of arc rounds, increasing it from 35 to 45, I think your ammo capacity is too low to make effective use of the accelerator. So I don't recommend that you pick it, but... A lot of people from my stream chat swear by it, and they say that it's great, so give it a try. But I am skeptical, to say the least. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the loadout just a little bit. We're going to get into the game. So I wanted to play a really close-range, aggressive loadout with my Monarch here. I can't promise that I'm going to perform super-duper well with it, but I think that showing you this particular build is going to really solidify for you just what this Titan is potentially capable of. So we're going for Missile Racks. This is going to give us, well, double the rockets. Um, so once we get the core upgrade 1, we can shoot 10 rockets. Uh, that is a maximum possibility of 3,000 damage. So 5 rockets will deal 1,500. That means 1 rocket is 300 damage each. A little bit less than Tone Rockets if memory serves. Maybe it's a little more. I think Tone Rockets are like 330 or something. So it's just mildly less than Tone Rockets, but pretty close. For the second kit, we're going to go for Rearm and Reload. This just lets me reload my gun faster. lets me rearm, go through the rearm animation faster. The point here is that what I want to do is I want to get close to somebody. So I want to dash up to somebody. I want to get close to them, right? I want to energy siphon them. That will allow me to slow them. That will give me some shields. They will not be able to aim effectively. 
while they're slow and while I'm close to them, I then want to launch my rocket salvo to do a big burst of damage that is a little bit harder to actually miss. Now, knowing me, I'm going to freaking miss it a million times and be terrible, but that's the goal, right, is to hit that rocket salvo. Then we're going to rearm. That should hopefully, by the time we hit level 2, if we're still alive at that point, go even faster, which is really, really nice. Then we're going to go ahead and use our abilities again. We're going to energy siphon them a second time, rocket salvo them a second time. If we hit all of our rockets and we're perfect, we're looking at a 6,000 damage spike, plus any chain gun that we happen to mix in there in the meantime. So if you dash, use these two abilities, and then don't rearm right away, you can dash a second time just based on your natural dash recharge, and then rearm, dash a third time. So you get a big burst of speed and a big burst of damage by pairing your abilities effectively. Now, there is an argument to be made for, instead of using Rearm and Reload, using Maelstrom, because by the time we unlock Maelstrom, we're going to have a lot of, co of charges of Electric Smoke ready, and we want to get that extra damage. There's also a decent argument to be made for Energy Field. This means that by the time we get to that second level and we're just getting in enemies' faces... This will help us to keep entire groups of enemies under crowd control effects. It'll make it harder for them to hit us and actually kill us. So this may actually be the better option than Rearm and Reload for this build. So I'm going to actually change my mind and switch to that instead. Because I don't think that Rearm and Reload is going to really be that great for this build. But I don't know. I mean, it's two sides of the same coin, right? This could, could potentially allow me to put more damage out more quickly and thus save health. This could allow me to crowd control multiple people and thus save health. So it's it's really a toss-up, and it's too early to tell which one might be better for this style of play. But I think I'm going to maybe actually try the energy field instead. Uh, finally, we're just going to go for superior chassis because we're taking a billion damage, and we need the health. If we can even make it to that point, we're going to need the extra health. So we're going to go ahead, move into a match. We'll see what happens, guys. I'll catch you right after I edit this video into the next part. All right, everyone, and we are in game. I am in a losing game in progress. That's what I get for not matching with the network, I suppose. But we'll go ahead and see if we can make a comeback here. We've only got a couple of minutes in this match, so uh, we'll see what we're able to muster. Luckily, I started with a pretty high core charge percentage, so should be able to do pretty nicely with this. So you want to use that core to heal yourself. So you want, sometimes I want to wait on activating it just to get that shield at the maximal amount of time, or the perfect amount of time. Uh, I need to just run away. We're taking a billion damage right now, and uh, uh, my my butthole hurts a little bit. Oops. You actually are able to, to cancel that. Here, let's rearm. You can cancel this with melee, just like you can laser shots. So very, very important to know if you... Well, didn't just guess that yourself. You also cannot hold it for anywhere near as long as a laser shot, so you need to be very proactive about canceling that if you can't actually use it on a target. Right now we're just trying to play a little bit passive, try to poke, maybe not go too crazy with the rocket combos. This guy, we're going to come behind this guy though. I right, got some free shields at least. They're all spawning over there to my left. I have a team here, but they're all super dead. So look at that. I dashed and rearmed, and I have a dash back right away. Which I didn't use because I'm bad, but you know. That's that's kind of the idea, right? So we're going to rearm and dash away. Okay, so get ourselves a little bit more space. Yeah, we're just all getting executed now. But that's kind of the idea, right? Is that you can dash, rearm, dash, and you have a lot of mo you have a big burst of mobility along with a big burst of damage if you can make it actually work right. This is by no means an easy thing to do, right? But it's it's more more than anything else meant to display how the Titan works, and how you can expect things to actually go. So 
So we'll get that battery out of him. Heal up a little bit. Ah, crap. You can see, like, how you can start to kind of snowball a little bit if you just get stuff get stuff rocking the right way. Oh, okay. Hey, all right. Well, I'm doomed, which sucks, but hey. Uh, at least I have a second core ready. Oh, man, I forgot that he still has a dash. That sucks. I could have gotten away from him, but I didn't. But you guys are starting to get the idea, at least, right? Like, obviously this Titan is going to take a lot of time to get good at, and this is a very difficult build to actually play and be effective with. Like, I could just be standing back and chain gunning people, but instead I'm you know, just trying to become the meme. I need to go over and punish that, uh, that tone. Get some good damage in, some free core charge. Try to help out our teammate. Oh, I just lose. Let's get nuke cord. Oh man, I wish these titans didn't have nuke cores. Let's see how long I can survive. Yeah. Not that long, apparently. <laughs> but you can see how Monarch can kind of struggle. Because you don't have a good defensive ability and you have to kind of just go in on people. So it is easy to just get blown up by, you know, Herp Derp. Laser core, herp derp, rocket core. Oops, that was a teammate. That was pretty bad. Let's go ahead and rearm and make the mistake go away. You guys see that? dash into rearm into another dash. Simple, but really good. All right, that was really short. So we're going to go ahead and try to get one more match in for you guys. We'll go ahead and edit forward a little bit and see if we can't do a little bit more gameplay for y'all. All right, streaming, we are back. Game number two. Got some Relic going on. Relic is the brand new map in Titanfall 2, in case you guys have not seen it yet. Um, this is a remastered map from Titanfall 1, and honestly was a very strange pick in my opinion, but I'm pretty fine with it, to be all at all honest with you guys. I don't mind it at all. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to rearm right off the bat to get that double dash. We'll get up a little bit faster. Get that quick energy siphon off. Just run right past. Get some free health. No big deal. This is dangerous, pushing this lane like this. Um, okay, so there's a tone down here. Is that a burst fire tone? So remember, this laser shot is a... Well, not laser shot. Energy siphon is a defensive ability. You should not be making a point of peeking people with it to, like, do damage. Just, you know, just, just add it in whenever you can. Oh, boy. This is very bad. Let's just go ahead and run away from that. No need to rearm. I mean, I guess it's not a huge deal either way, but... Not, not feeling like I'm going to get a big benefit from it quite yet. So, we're trying to play slow, play a little farther back, just keep our health counts high. Keep the health total high. Because we're a poor little weak, little weak dude right now. This is where we're going to go in. See, all those missed shots that did not do a whole lot of damage, but 
The smoke was just enough to get that execution off. There we go. That's right, that was a 1-2, Gates. There we go. So see, you see how you can snowball with this? Like, if you just get into the perfect situation, and we're already at core level 3, we have that core level upgrade. Look at how huge my health bar is right now, and I have another core ready. So once you're at level 3, then all that your core ability does is it recharges your shield and nothing more. That's all that it does. Wow, he never shot me. Cool. I'm okay with that. So we're waiting on this core until my shield drops just to get free health. It also seems like it might give you a very short invincibility period as well, which is really cool. And that level 1 Monarch could not do a thing to me as I'm a level 3 Monarch. Just, he got completely ripped up. Sucks for him, but feels good for me. Probably should not be standing on the bridge like that, exposing myself. Poor decisions. I was really hoping that I would just get that instant doom and termination. Okay, whatever. Teammate got him. Good enough for me. Uh, this was not a good fight. I should not be taking this fight. That dude's got the electric chain gun. It just is not a good one for me to take. Especially when my health is so shield-based. Oh boy, oh boy, this is not good for me. Being a little bit too aggressive here. Ugh. But it's alright. Got a full team of dudes. Probably should just be passive a little bit. Work on some uh, shots. Oh, okay. So I'm on like what? Six or seven core activations now? Literally can't even see anything in the smoke, just mashing it and praying for the best. Oh boy. That's an ion. Well, this is probably where I get doomed. Maybe? Ugh, run away! Rearm to run! Alright. Uh, I don't know if I can peek anyone from this hole. Do I climb through the hole? I'm gonna climb through the- uh, No! Oh, he got me. Well, I had to die eventually, right? But I doomed him. We did a lot of work with our Monarch. We did a lot, a lot, a lot of work with that Monarch. We're gonna go ahead and restart from level 1 here. Again, once you have to restart from level 1, just play slow. Play passively. Like, you're not gonna do a lot of damage. You're very weak for the most part. Just try to maintain some semblance of a cool and... Just work on getting that core up as best you can. Your goal isn't to do damage. Your goal is to stay alive and get that first core activation with as little damage taken as possible. Oops. So picking off some like three health dudes is pretty good for us. Uh... That was some pretty unlucky timing. I probably could have used my regular rockets before uh, rearming. Oh well. I'm getting all these kills. Like, I should not be getting these. Just getting lucky from my teammates. But hey, if we're making a YouTube video, I am perfectly happy with luck. Oh, those all went between his legs. Did you guys see that? I 
should not be peeking like this, but whatever. Again, that was a poor rearm because my stuff was about to come off of cooldown naturally. But it turned out not, have, not mattering. Got the battery and we're back to full. And we're level 3 again. Gonna smash our way through these guys, man. Ow. Fine. You wanna fight me like that? Beat rockets, nerd. Doing a billion damage. Ah, I tried my best. And you get you get so many charges of electric smoke while playing this Titan that really you can just start throwing it down everywhere for no reason other than you have it and you might as well, right? That's kind of why Maelstrom starts to get kind of decent, is that you can just throw throw smoke down wherever. You have a million charges. Like, you should never feel bad about using a charge of smoke with this Titan, because it's not a big deal. There we go. Also, a big important thing with playing with Monarchs, not as Monarch, but playing with a Monarch is that you really, really want to let them get their executions whenever possible. Because they can get a- they pull a battery out for free. Like, let them get their battery and work on getting their core up. Because the whole point of your teammate playing Monarch is that they need to get their cores as quickly as possible and get to that level 3 state. So, very, very critical that you let that happen and that you facilitate that. Legion is probably, like, the best choice against this Titan right now. Very hard to deal with. It's a lot of health to work through, a lot of damage output that you have no uh, good defensive option to, you know, deal with. So, do not recommend what I'm doing right here. It's actually very bad. I'm dying, like, easy peasy, and I'm gonna get doomed here. But... Because I have so many charges of smoke. Ah, oh, I missed. Oh no, this is bad. I could have got the double rockets. Oh, get the melee. Oh, where is where's the melee at? That sucks. Oh well. In the end, it didn't even matter. Got those 12 kills, 8 assists, only 3 deaths. Pretty nice. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the Monarch gameplay. Hopefully you can see what she is really capable of and how strong she can be. This is just one of the many builds available to you. You can always go for something like the healing build. You can always go for just a crazy CC build. You can go for a full rockets build. So instead of going halfway into it like I could, you can go for the, the missile racks along with multi-target missiles and it's rearm and reload to just rain a billion missiles on your foes all totally viable ways to play this titan and i hope to see some cool stuff from you guys that you all figure out thanks again for watching i'll see you in the next one have a good day guys take care